Board of Finance meeting for Wednesday, March 27th. Um, we'll go ahead and start uh, by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, liberty, and justice for all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is public speak. I don't see anybody from the public. Eric, do you on your screen? Uh, no, there does not appear to be anybody here from the public. Okay. All right. How come uh, they don't love us? We're meeting too often for them. They don't know. Well, uh, salute the thing here. Sorry. Um, okay, we'll move on to agenda item three, which is changes or additions to the agenda. Does anybody have any proposed changes or additions to the agenda for tonight? I'm all set. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to old business. The first one is 4A, review the policy for AES capital expenditures. I don't know if we have any new on that. Yeah, I so I, I can speak to that. Mark, uh -huh. um, you know, I had a chance last week after the CIP meeting on Thursday, I met with Shannon for a bit. We sat down and talked about sort of conceptually where we were and set up a meeting for tomorrow night uh, at my place. For hopefully we'll have a couple of hours to sit down and actually draft. Uh, we didn't make progress on language. We just sort of talked about, you know, where we were and everything because it's been a while. So, <clears throat> excuse me. With last week having both board of finance and board of NCIP meetings, you know, I didn't have a ton of time. So oh, we're hoping it sounds to, like progress and re engagement. So that's something, right? Uh, yeah, we're hoping to make some real progress tomorrow night. Okay. Anybody have anything else on that? The, the only thing I would say to that is that uh, the audit that we are submitting. Um, does assume that the $112,000 surplus from AES will be put in that capital account. So um, that was based on the Board of Finance agreeing to the earlier amount, even though the amount has changed. So just as a point, um, that's, and I know they haven't given us anything. We don't actually have the money, but that is what was, that is what the audit is is basically claiming. So I think as we file it, we probably ought to figure out how to actually get that money. Um, you know, Eric, remind uh, us how that that was decided. You're saying the Board of Finance decided that. So the Board of Finance, if you remember I mean, back when, last last summer when the uh, AES wanted to do the parking lot. Okay. Uh, what was agreed was that they transfer a check. Okay. Uh, and you requested $130,000. They originally wrote a check for like 124, mm -hmm. which they then took back because they didn't actually have 124 to write. Um, and the the final number I think was like 112. And Thank I have, you for reminding. I get it. I just you know I wanted to make sure. Right. It was because it was the yeah, parking lot. And yeah. it had just to clarify, it was that right that we weren't just deciding we were going to transfer the balance. And the only other thing I wanted to add, Mark, um, hopefully with Rob talking to Shannon tomorrow night, I think we had made progress at that last meeting discussing it. Where hopefully, you know, a lot got discussed, a lot of points were made, and I know Shannon now understands that it there was going to be money put in it besides just the transferring money. So I'm. I wish you luck and thank you for taking that on. Hopefully it'll be a productive meeting. That's all. Rob, thank you. The only thing I want to add to that is, and I could be misspeaking, so just bear with me, but um, I have a memory from a discussion. It was either at the CIP meeting or just after, because Celeste was there and Shannon was there. And I'm not sure they have 112 anymore. Eric, do you recall what I'm talking about? I feel like it was a slightly lower figure. Uh, as far as I know, that was the last number the auditor gave me. All right, was that I'll have that to... was what their surplus was. Okay, I'll have to. Which is not to say they didn't decide to do something else with their surplus. They could have, but that's not what what was in the audit. Yeah, I don't know that they've spent 
money per se. I, I'm not really clear on this, but for some reason I had a different number in my head. A little, just not not a huge difference, but um, you know, more like 103 or something like that. Uh, so that's something I'll have to nail down. I'll talk to Shannon tomorrow night about that too. Uh, I, I can't remember with Celeste or her who mentioned that to me uh, last week, but it may be because we're putting in a hundred thousand is the idea uh, from the town side. And the idea was that they had one Oh something on their side. And then we were discussing at that CIP meeting, we talked about the project that could be 200 ish and that would cover. So that's, that's the, those are the figures I had in my head, but I, I honestly can't recall well enough now. So I'll let it ride. I'll let you guys know <laughs> what I know when I know it. Um, but I think the 112 may be a touch high. Sure. Any other comments or questions on that? Topic? Just a clarification. Um, they will get the hundred and whatever put into the capital fund plus a hundred thousand dollars in this year's budget added to it. Okay, I just want to make sure I understood that correct. I thought that they were giving a hundred and something back to the town, and then going forward, we were to add a hundred thousand dollars, but well, that's basically it because the town controls the account, so they'll have to they'll have to transfer the money to the town, and then the idea is into that account, grand, right? The right grand here. total would be like two hundred, though. Is the point? Yeah, right. next fiscal year, once we had a chance to to, to move that money in. Okay, I just want to make sure I understood that. Thanks. And then, Mark, is it they still, of course, want to go forward with the parking lot? Hopefully, the they'll be. Or are we not talking about that? Uh, okay. When we get to CIP. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that, that may be a second on the priority list. Okay. okay. No problem. Other questions? Okay. Well, I guess let's move on to item 4B, which is review of budget to actual. Um, we have this in our packet. Um, I have not had a chance to even open this till tonight, but I don't know if anybody has any specific questions or Eric, you have anything that needs to be highlighted? Uh, no, at this point, overall, you know, we're in good shape. We don't really have any specific issues. So, so I'm budget wise right now, I don't see any issues with us through the end of the year. So, go ahead, Bill. Uh, I was just say, so Eric, is it normal that we would be at this point? Um, in the year or in the budget, still short, you know, two million dollars in tax revenue, property tax revenue, a million dollars in government revenues. I'm just looking at the short, the shortages so far. Like, does that we fully intend to get all that by? Yeah. So in? the state is notoriously late for supplying the full freight for uh, ECS or educational cost sharing. And that is, that is the bulk of what we get from the state. So usually this time of year, we're still a million short um, on ECS funding. Um, so yeah, that's, that's not at all surprising. They paid us basically half of what they owe us for a year. We will get that before the end of the year, um, but they'll take their, uh, their time in, in sending that to us. And with the property taxes, though, like you would think they're due in July, right? And here we are in almost Other April. quarterly, some of them, Bill. So. No, so so the way oh. it works is automobile taxes are one time a year. Gotcha. Um, real estate is quarterly, so that's four times a year. That's so right. we expect a very significant fraction of taxes, you know, are due in the month of April. Yep, I forgot about that. Okay, thank you. Um, can I mark real quick? Yeah. Um, with, with I backing up too, I apologize, I missed it. Um, I was looking at the the agenda and I don't see that we have CIP liaison on there. Can we add it? Um, uh, under, well, we could no, just do it under board open discussion, I suppose. Okay. What's that, Eric? Uh, that's actually under under item nine liaison reports. Yeah, that's liaison. Where we reports, normally yeah. deal with that. Oh, 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 sorry, I see it now. Yep, my fault. Okay. Good. Other questions about the budget today? Actual or actuals to budget year to date? 
And remember, we budget fairly closely overall. So usually by the end of the year, roughly one third of the line items that we have, the individual line items are over. But overall, if we look at department budgets, we're in pretty good shape across the board with department budgets. So I'm not seeing any major shortfalls that we're gonna need to account for um, you know, in this budget. Other than we will be over in the transportation drivers. Um, there'll definitely be some areas where we're over, but overall in the budget, we're in good shape and we can absorb those overages and still be in the black for the year. Yeah, I mean, some of our stuff like sand and salt and DPW overtime are probably under significant, right? right? So yeah, I'm looking at that right now from snow removal. <laughs> like 50, 54. For this year anyway. Yeah, for, for this year. Yep. You could still have a snow event. We shouldn't talk too loudly. <laughs> well, no. In <laughs> the discussion and, earlier. And believe it or not, we have used an awful lot of salt this year because the, the funny things is the snowier years don't necessarily correspond to when we use the most mm. snow. The, the we had a lot of rain events with years, freezing. Yeah. We have more icing. So it's it's kind of an odd, odd thing in that. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. That's that's interesting. Good point. All right. Okay. Any other questions about the budget? Okay. Hearing none, I guess we'll move on. The next item is check register. Same thing. Any specific questions on that? The usual big items, big ticket items are there. Town of Mansfield, what's that, Eric? Is that the uh, uh, so, waste or health no, department? The town of Mansfield, uh, there's two things we pay the Town of Mansfield for. The first is they are the fiduciary for the Eastern Highlands Health District. That's for the majority yeah. of the money we pay. We yeah, also pay fine. them a small sum because they manage some of the programs for mid Neroc which is our hazardous waste consortium. So you'll see two payments to town of Mansfield for that. Most of the money is would be the health district. Okay. Barton and Lagarducci LLC. So Bart, that's Barton that. and Lajudas. They are the engineering, they yeah. yeah. Don't ask me why, but that's how they pronounce it. That is the engineering firm we hired to uh, do the Route 316 connectivity study ah, okay. um, and grant application. That is that is actually funded. Um, that is a congressional or a legislative grant that we got to pay for that. So that's not, I mean, we're paying it, but, but it's not, we... You know that's not tax dollars. It's covered. Paid. Yeah. Okay. Got yep. it. Mm -hmm. And and what is just curious? What is spring? What is what? There's a line item. It's called a spring. S P R I N G. Right under Tuttle. Robert Tuttle. This. Uh, so it's only fourteen thousand seven hundred. But I'm just I'm just curious. What is what is? Oh, spring? that that goes to that's basically health. Uh, um payments why that's listed as that i don't know but i was just curious when i saw the word spring i was like oh spring cleanup like what's spring i wonder if the note they put in there had to do with the spring payment or something or is that it's a monthly payment right no it is spring it, it's it's it probably should put q2 q3 or something like that you know yeah so that is one of their so that is basically health and benefits payments from the town Oh, um, grand, that's yeah. what that is. Spring is, I think that's the the organization that actually manages the RAM consortium. Um, why it doesn't say RAM consortium, I don't know. The one below it is the monthly payment to AES, and the ACH below that is our uh, our RAM. monthly payment to RAM. Yeah. Um, AES is the same payment every month. 
RAM, they give us basically a schedule a year ahead of time, which is based on past experience when they need what money. So each, each month, the RAM one varies every month, but the AES, we give them the same amount every month because, you know. Yeah. So just it's just a weird, it was just a weird one. That's mm -hmm. the name, but that's all I was asking about. Yeah. Yeah. No, that should be renamed and that should say something like, I don't know, healthcare consortium or something like that. Yeah. I have a related question, Eric, just because you've mentioned before, I know she's part of the treasurer, you know, works in, is she, you've mentioned before she's in Florida. Has she been checking in? Is she working remotely? Is. Yeah, she's working remotely. Oh, okay. Um, so we do have contact with her. She's just, you know. I mean, she's able to take meetings if she has to, or. Yeah. And you, like... you can always, you know, I we still talk to her and, and go back and forth and she still, you know, reconciles remotely. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, she can function. It's easier yeah. when she's local, but, mm -hmm. but it's functional having her in Florida. No, gotcha. I mean, I know she doesn't want to hang on and be the treasurer forever. And we've said we're lucky to have her. So I just wanted to make sure she's still in contact and, if she needs to, I mean, that's the great thing about remote. You could be anywhere. I was in Vermont on vacation, did one of these meetings. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. Another just curiosity, uh, what is Cargill, Inc.? Just curious. Oh, Cargill, that's who we get salt from. Oh, cool. That's the salt bill. Thanks. Yeah. No, that's probably a fairly large payment. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember that one, though. Yeah. Yep. Any others? Okay, I guess we'll go on to audit review. So, Eric, you know, my understanding is that, you know, we've approved the budget. This is going to be submitted to the state. Obviously, we still have the open item of the corrective action plan, which we're working on scheduling a meeting to discuss with the various entities, including the uh, the Board of Selectmen and the uh, Board of Education, the Treasurer, et cetera. Yep. Okay. That's a pretty good summary. Mike is planning on, I think, submitting the audit uh, this week. I signed the, uh, the audit review notes, uh, the end of a representation letter, um, and forwarded to Cheryl to sign um, and usually the the school signs a separate management uh, letter um, also to the auditor. So hopefully that will be accomplished in the next couple of days and Mike can hit send on the audit. Because that's okay. important, right, Eric? Because March ends the end of, I knew we were all hoping to get it submitted right by the end of March. March. And yep. that, that comes this week and with the holiday and all. So yeah. hopefully there's a plan. Friday, yeah. Yeah, yep. so I know Monday's the first. So you feel like that's all in line, like you said, and hopefully Cheryl signed. I mean, I know we voted it in at the last meeting or whatever. Right. It, Mike sent it to me this morning. I printed it out, signed it, sent it to Cheryl. So all she has to do is sign Sounds, it. Yeah. Sounds it good. Back. So I don't think it'll be a problem on the town end. And there's no reason the school can't, couldn't have turned their end around today also. Okay. Sounds good. I know that March 31st is this week. That's all. Okay. Yep. Okay. No other questions or comments in that item. We'll move on to 5A, which is the new business DPW equipment schedule. So get out your magnifying glasses and you can look at the no. schedule. I need my um, printed in. <laughs> so I think Jay did send you this before he did. Um, separately in in excel so you can see it you know in in big screen but i asked that this gets put in the packet because what happens is every year or two the equipment schedule and the equipment request list for public works gets updated and then it gets shopped around to cip board of selectmen and board of finance and what cip does is reviews the request list and say, yes, 
that makes sense or no, it doesn't. So they've submitted it to CIP. CIP has agreed to endorse the capital equipment plan. Um, and so then it goes on to you. Um, and um, that's important because future decisions on what equipment we make or buy, you know, get based off of that. Um, and so what I've been working with Jay on is to put it all in a more coherent uh, set of data than he was presenting before. He had all the information. He just was presenting it in a very non-easy to understand. So I think we've reduced it to something that's easy to review and understand, you know, what the plan is and why. So I, I don't think you need to make any action on this. There's there's nothing you need to do. This is just for your information as the Board of Finance. So you can kind of keep it in the back of your head and know, you know, in a few years what you're likely to see for an equipment request. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric. When when will the um I'm I'm sorry I have to get this but when will the referendum be on the new mower? That's a good question. So mm -hmm. I am working furiously with the town's attorney to get oh, all yeah. the things that we need to get together for the public meeting, because there's two lot line adjustments. There's at least uh, um three ordinances that the board of selectmen you know, want to put through. Um, and then there is the grant request for the AES field and, uh, you know, and then the request for the mower. So there's gonna be a lot at that meeting. You know, I'm, I honestly don't have everything collated. Um, I'm missing a couple of things. Oh, and the, you know, so I've got most of it, um, but I don't have all of it. And the board was kind of adamant that they only wanted to have one meeting. So I'm going to hope that at the next board of selectmen meeting, we can identify a date. Um, and I've talked a little bit about the town clerk uh, for that. And then also the, at the next meeting, the board of selectmen has to officially set the date for the annual town budget meeting. Um, so that should be early May. Because Eric, I know we've been talking about this for months, so it's just, and I, I'm not putting any blame at all, but it just will help us as a board making decisions, you know, that are current with the budget. You know, we want to have the input. We've had plenty of meetings and costs and, you know, things that are going to be this year. Like you said, there's, there's multiple things that will help us make decisions, so... I would hope, and like when you say it's after the next Board of Selectmen meeting, isn't that usually mid-month or like the 10th or something? Yeah, next Board of Selectmen meeting is the 8th. I don't have a calendar. At that meeting when they want to schedule it. Because I would hope, I mean, because we're going to be stuck. We'll all, I mean, obviously we'll be having budget meetings moving forward. So that was a really good question. So hopefully they prepared, be prepared since there's weeks before that. To maybe set a date that next week or something or whenever. Yeah, we'd have to do a couple weeks out because we still have to do public notice and a bunch of things. But I then can it see could... it doing it more towards the third week in April. Um, okay. That would certainly be my goal is to get that done so we have that meeting and then have the budget meeting. Um, well, we know. need some time in before, you know, it's just going to push everything back. If everything's been pushed back a year and we don't have the stuff in our hands, I want to have enough time to ponder what the public says if we have to go. But I, I understand what you're hoping for. But because of the way we're budgeting now, where we're putting money in permanent funds, mm -hmm. we're basically spending money mm -hmm. at this point that has already been allocated up to this point. Mm -hmm. So... I don't think that I hear what you're saying. My, my fear or uneasiness with it is we've made decisions and never really brought it to the public meeting. So I just want to have their input on it. I agree with you that we've decided how we'll fund it and we'll put certain amounts in, you know, and, and now there's going to be, like you said, we're going to be looking at this public works projection and the, the equipment and 
that'll be a time cycle. I know it's different things, but um, yeah, I mean, I, especially the big items like the tankers and the trucks and the this and the that, you know, you want to, I, I know that there needs or whatever, you know, so some things are going to dictate that we can't have the public input because we're going to have to do it if something just breaks down and it doesn't work anymore and the town needs it. But that's that's my point. Understood. Thanks. Any other questions on those documents? It's actually a good layout looking at it. So kudos to you and Jay to get that organized. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, nice. uh, it's pretty clear. You know, it lays it out well. You see the progression. You see the changes. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes sense. So right. I think it's well done. Good. One more question just on the equipment. I think um, Bill was alluding to this too. Eric, is that did we decide at the last budget meeting and what the Board of Selectmen had hoped for that the trailer will be purchased out of funds from this year? Right. Yes. That, okay. that that was the Board of Finance decision. Not that was not actually the Board of Selectmen's decision. But that's okay. Well, um, I mean, I had listened to the Board of Selectmen select uh idea or right. the way they wanted it to go. And I brought it up at the Board of Finance. So thank you for that correction. Right. And then right. we did vote on it. Yes, we did vote on it. Correct. And we've actually purchased the trailer and it's sitting at Public Works at the moment. Oh, that was my next question. Some things <laughs> get done quickly. That's great. <laughs> well, once it get once all three boards have approved it, you know, then it's just a question of me doing the paperwork. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, plus, plus we could have they could have sold it if if we didn't act on it, right? I mean, they yeah, it was in stock. Right. Right. We needed them. Yeah, it was right there. Yeah, yeah. it was right there. So. Mm -hmm. You like to act fast and not lose that. So yeah, we chose to avoid the debt services. What we did, that was last meeting. Perfect. Any other questions on the DPW heavy equipment? No, uh, I guess my last question would be just out of curiosity. I know you talked about this in the past, uh, Eric, but you look at that frontline spare truck that's like way past its usable service. It looks like. We've had it for 26 years and usable service is 15. Like, would we ever just like sell that just to get rid of it and get a little money for it? Or is it way beyond that? Or what's the plan for that truck? Just out of curiosity. So right now that's our spare truck. Um, so we have three trucks. The oldest of our frontline service trucks is a 2004. And then the 97 Ford is an emergency spare. Uh, um, the 2004 is a piece of junk. Um, um, we're actually going to get rid of the 2004 and keep the 97 because wow. the 97 is way more reliable <laughs> and way better condition than the 2004. And there were a couple reasons for that. First of all, um, 2004, they didn't want to spend the money, um, so they bought a really cheap plow truck um, and that's cost us. Um, we've put over the life of that equipment, you know, we've put like a, almost $130,000 into maintenance of that piece of equipment. Um, and we're actually, it's actually, we've taken it off the road now because um, we blew the power steering uh, unit in the vehicle. So, so basically the reason we're keeping the 97 is because it's a lot better than our 2004. Um, it was an older, the older Fords were all the pre uh, pollution equipment. So they had a lot less problems overall. And we have had to spend the money to completely redo the brakes on it. Um, but right now that vehicle is fully functional. So that will remain our spare plow truck, even though it's really old. Thanks. Other questions? Okay, I guess we will move on to our next agenda item, which is the approval of uh, capital purchase process form. So I think it's, can kind of see what's uh, going on here, Eric. You're looking for a form to kind of track these capital projects. Um, do you want to talk to this? Sure. So basically, 
Um, this wasn't an audit finding, but one of the recommendations the auditor put in there is that we produce a form to track capital purchases. And the reason is every year they come out, they do an audit and they pull, you know, 20% or 30% of our major and say, okay, give me all the supporting documentation for this. And we have it all, but we've never kept it in a coherent package. So we have to look at meeting was, agendas and things, minute, minutes and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So what it takes is I then have to go back through the board of selectmen meetings, figure out what month it got approved, make a copy of that, do the same thing for board of finance, do the same thing for CIP. So instead we have a form which tracks that and we put a packet together and it gets kept in the finance office. And next year when we, they ask for that, we just pull out the packet, hand them the packet and go. Um, and make everybody's life easier. So that was an easy audit recommendation. Um, this I think should essentially outline all the players so that we we say, you know, what type of capital expense it is, what we based the approval on, what boards approved it and when, when I signed it, and how it goes. So mm -hmm. My my comment on the on the form itself is is just generally that there's no place to put the actual definition of the project there. Um, so okay. you, you want to come up with something there. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I think that the other fields of data are appropriate. Okay. Um, you know, you. I don't think you really need anything anything more. Um, you know, the public meeting required. Yes, no, and then date. You might want to have date approved or something like that. I guess by, maybe by definition, it's date approved. So, um, so that's probably fine. But I think, yeah, other than just having a place to describe, you know, give it a give it a project name and then give it a little brief description. This project, this is to approve the purchase of a you know trailer for the you know DPW. Sure. You know. Okay, I can certainly Rob. add that. That makes sense. I, I just had a quick question on the approval based on and what's right underneath that. You've got RFP and like a little line there for I assume yes, no, whatever. And then state contract. Should there is there supposed to be like a are there supposed to be two separate things? Should there be a spot check box check box that really? off or yeah. not? Uh, that that line just looked a little wonky to me, and I I want to make sure that that's what you're intending. Yeah, you want to make it clear what's to be filled in. Yeah, I mean, I just assumed it, if it was an RFP, we would put our RFP number on there, mm -hmm. make that easy. And we're going to put a copy of the RFP in the packet. If it's a state contract, you know, I guess we could put a thing in there to put the state contract bid number on if you wanted to see that. Um, and or just, I just make it clear by saying circle one or something. Or just, put a like, check box. Like they should be mm -hmm. separated in some way. It was, was by my thought. Because like, those yeah. are two different okay. things, right? Yep. But just so it's clear, like when this, when you think about how this would actually be filled out and then two years later, somebody wants to look at it, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. <clears throat> right. So that it makes sense. But otherwise, yeah, I think it's a good form. Okay. I like it. Okay, I can certainly make those corrections. You want to see it again next month and whatever I came up with? Yes. Yes. Okay. Not a problem. Here. Looks good, though. Just a couple extra things. Other comments or questions, input on the forum? Okay, I guess we'll go on to item 5C, which is the KERMA budget. So, I'm bringing this to you because every year they come back and tell us what our actual increases are going to be. So we're locked in for a three-year window with them. They give us basically what our maximum rate increase year over year would be. Um, but we don't necessarily actually get charged that. It's based on our claims history. What? Um, but basically they're giving us the max rate increase for both liability uh, and workers comp. Um, on the workers comp side, we did have one moderately significant claim from public works um, that wasn't 
related to an accident, but it was related to somebody who had a medical emergency um, while he was at work. As far as the, the LAP policy, uh, there was a very significant claim by AES. That was about $35,000 related to their plumbing system. So that blew our uh, LAP rate up. Um, so those two things combined, they're giving us a, the max con contractual rate increase they could. Um, but I'd already accounted for that in the budget. So it just means the budget's not going to go down now that they've given us the final rate increase. But that's the reason why. So, so those two claims kicked us up to their, you know, contractual maximum, basically. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. I'm actually vaguely surprised that the AAS plumbing issue was covered. Uh, I'm, I'm glad it was. Uh, you know, this is not my bailiwick. I, I do environmental claims, so it's a little different. But I usually know my way around a liability policy. And I was thinking, you know, uh, but whatever. I'm glad they, they helped with it because obviously it was a, you know, immediate need. <laughs> yep. And I just want to comment too, I'm surprised and I don't want to get into anybody's personal business or even what a medical emergency was, but I've dealt with Kerma a lot too. So I'm surprised that if someone had a medical emergency at work that wasn't caused by work, that there was a claim against that. I mean, I could see where an individual would want to do that, but having it affect our town rates is shocking to me having worked with Kerma all the time, so... I, I mean, well, but remember, he's on the town's health insurance plan, so it's billed against the town one way or the other. It just makes whether. No, but I mean, if you have, it's our, just in not talking. If you have a personal health something, whatever, like I'm at work and some health thing happens to me, I'm just going to go through however I'm insured. I'm not going to the town for my personal. You know, that's why the town offers insurance. And I, again, I want everybody to be healthy. I'm all about wellness. So I'm not getting, this is shocking to me. So are you able to, I'll look in my packet. I thought I had printed that out um, and it's hard for me to shuffle through. So I'll take a look at that. But yeah, that's shocking that someone's personal illness would affect a town's policy. So well, I mean, if you have somebody that's working in the shop and has a heart attack, if it, it occurs while they're working, that is oh, we that have would those be things. a town issue. We right? have no, we have things that happen like that all the time. Again, I don't want to fight anybody's personal thing, but I could be walking from my car into my job and I unfortunately have that happen to me. And I, it wouldn't be a work issue at all. It would be a personal health issue and my health insurance would take care of it. So again, I can't wrap my head around your way of thinking with this, but again, probably an off camera thing. It, it's only because you're bringing it up as a finance thing and it's affecting the town's policy. is shocking to me because I've never seen that happen. Sure, Just but because if you were- It doesn't matter where it happens as long as, I mean, I've had people get injured at work and have to go in for surgery. And that's, you know, so that's all. Just, I don't want to go on and on about it because I want everybody to be well, but it's pretty surprising to me. And that at least it, in kind of you're siding with them. So you're not the voice of kind of asking the questions to determine <laughs> what made that happen. Unless- But it's, it's, it's ultimately, it's not for me to decide. Right. It's for Kerma to decide whether right. that is a legitimate claim. Yeah. So an employee has the right to submit it. Oh, and I said that, please, when you talk, it sounds right. I do get that. And I said, I want, I can understand why the employee would do that, but I'd probably want information on both sides. And it looks like Rob knows a lot about it. So I'll defer to him. But so did you get a report back stating, Eric, that that particular situation was covered under Kerma? Kerma made a determination that that was a covered claim. Wow. Interesting. However, yeah. the only thing that occurs to me, and this is insurance hat on, but I'm not a health insurance mm -hmm. guy. But, you know, the, the, the thing that ultimately comes to mind is subrogation. Uh, we don't know mm. necessarily if Kerma will go subrogate 
against the health insurer for the individual. If they did, they shouldn't raise our rates then. Exactly. And that's well, the yeah, that's where it gets tricky. And I, I'm not an actuary, but um, yeah, yeah, that's I'm, where it gets I've tricky. This is where, you know, when you make a claim, even if it isn't covered, you know, it can, it can trip some things. So I don't know. And I'm, I'm probably, I'm outside my area of expertise, but it, it occurs to me that I mean, first blush, just, just looking at it, I actually had the same reaction Joanne had, which is, wait a minute, you know, that's not really a work comp thing, but the work comp carrier said it was covered. So, uh, a little yeah, weird. I work with Kerma a lot. I mean, I'm involved in investigations <laughs> with Kerma, so I'm, I, I have experience with this, or I wouldn't yeah. be bringing it up. So that's. Uh, it's, generally it's, speaking, insurance company doesn't go out and go, "Oh yeah, sure, we'll cover something that's not covered." So it, it's a little weird. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I, with and it. like I said, I would never, you know, be upset that an employee is going to try. I just, if they have health insurance, I don't know what the claim would be. But anyways, again, interesting. Thank you for that subtext. <laughs> That's going to no cause it surprising. I'm glad he, people have health insurance too, but um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Other uh, questions or comments? Okay, I guess let's move over to uh, seven. Uh, agenda item seven is our budget discussion. So um, we had a couple of things. minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm jumping out of time. Those are usually at the end. So meeting minutes for February 28, 2024. Um, be looking for somebody to make a motion to approve those meeting minutes. I'll go I ahead. Move. Oh, go ahead. I'm making motion to approve them as submitted. Okay. Second. Second. Rob, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So we will uh, move on to the next agenda item, and that is the approval of the meeting minutes for, I'm sorry, I should have called them out, but March 13th, these are a separate agenda item. This is the March 13th meeting minutes. Anybody want to make a motion to approve? It's the special budget meeting workshop. I will make a motion workshop. to approve the March 13th, 2024 special mm -hmm. budget meeting minutes. Okay, and a second? That's good. Louise seconds, thank you. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? Okay, very good, thank you. Now we can move on to agenda item seven, which is the budget discussion. We have three subtopics listed here. The first is the AES gymnasium floor. Uh, is this one that Louise wanted to add? You, Louise, you had a question on that? You wanted to add that in for discussion? Yeah. Get your mute. <laughs> you still muted? <laughs> okay, that's better. Yeah, Very I was good. just curious i had given a um a question back a couple of weeks ago and i was just kind of curious why we're doing the entire thing and we're not splitting it with the aes because i know we use it and aes uses the floor as well so is this going to be a continual thing i would guess so i you know the kind of the the running philosophy we've had regarding the gym um the gym work that's been done is that a the town's going to pay for it one way or the other and b uh, a lot of the activities that occur within the gym though by no means all but a lot of the activities uh, are town related activities so the rec leagues the town meetings the you know a few other things that happen there i don't really know exactly all that goes on there but that's, that's kind of been something that's been championed by the rec commission. So that's that's where this this particular uh, request is coming from. And actually, Brian, you're on that. So you, you might want to have a, uh, you, I don't know if you have anything to add to that.
but that's really my understanding, and that's why you know we we did this for the seeding. Um, if it had a request to help mm -hmm. support the refund, the refinishing of the floor, and also to replace some of the fans. So, all three of those I think fit under that rubric that you know we're we're trying to basically support the infrastructure that is uh, partially used by the town outside of school activities. So but, liability wise, if something were to happen there, is the town on the hook for that? Or is this the AES on the hook for that? For which? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Is it the town or the AES on the hook if there's any liability issue? It doesn't actually matter in the sense that the town pays 100% of the insurance bills for the town. The school does not pay into the insurance. Um, we as a town fund on our side all of the KERMA bills. Um, so, you know, the only thing they pay for is the Chubbs rider policy that covers the oil tanks, the in-ground oil tanks at the elementary school. Everything else the town assumes, so. Okay. They have in-ground oil tanks? Yes. How old are they? Old. Wow. Are they That's why we that? maintain insurance on them. Okay. Wow. Maybe we could talk about that at some point. Maybe not now. Mm -hmm. But that's a big flag for me, just based on what I do for work. Uh, depending on, how, on their age and what composition those tanks are. Do you know what they're made out of, Eric, off the top of your head? No, nope, I don't. Because if they're, they're fiberglass steel. tanks, the new tanks are fiberglass. The old tanks yeah, are still all steel. If, if they're and old, that's a bad, steel with bad that story. On them. But yeah, but they just don't let. Mm. Okay, yeah. we'll talk about that some other time, Eric. I'd like to maybe have a sidebar on that at some point because that scares me. <clears throat> it's very scary if that had a leak. That that's like. Whew. This is my point. It doesn't take much, and you don't know because. Okay, in the course of my career, I've, I've had a bajillion tank claims. And the thing is, underground storage tanks with oil in them, when they start to leak, you barely know it. It's such a right. small, slow thing. You get a pinhole, and a little bit dribbles out. And the next thing you know, it's gone on for years, and you have a whole plume coming off of it. And only when it gets really bad do you notice, oh, wait a minute, the, the level in the tank is low, or we're getting water in the furnace. The things that start to happen when things get really mixed up in there, by that point, you have a disaster. Yeah. Yep. You have um, a huge excavation the, the and a is, lot of hazardous fill, right? So it it it, it becomes a <laughs> it can be it depends on the scenario, and it's not like we don't know how to clean up oil leaks, but the, the point is these things can spiral very quickly. And mm -hmm. a modern day liability policy. I don't know what we have for our entire insurance program. Uh, I tried to stay out of it because I work for an insurance company. But, you know, it, it the modern day liability policies exclude pollution. So you, you're in a situation where if you have this old tank in the ground and it rots out on you, it rusts out on you because it's been in the ground for 15, 20, however many years, especially if it's sitting in the water table, you got a real problem on your hands. So that one... I had no idea that we still had stuff buried in this town. Uh, you want it indoors. You do not want that in the in the ground. And so sooner rather than later, I don't even, depending on the age of the tanks and the composition thereof, that's another thing to put on their capital list to get the, the heck out of that, get those things out of the ground. Because yeah. the longer you wait, the more you're courting disaster. I, I agree 100%. I, I've had some experience with that too, Rob, and <laughs> disaster so we should find that out so let's put that on the agenda for next meeting maybe we can have somebody i don't know if somebody from school needs to represent or give us a report on that um but i think that that point like is well taken the sooner we start like talking about more, it the like, better off we'll know, be for planning installation date composition you know that sort of thing. I mean, if they're single wall steel tanks, which are really the old ones, I'm hoping they're not. But if they are, good God. If they're fiberglass tanks, no problem. Okay, I'm not going to freak, but 
you know, if, if they're the older tanks or even a double wall steel, I don't, I'm not quite sure what the data installation is. And so what sort of they, what would they, what they would have been. But in my, the, my claims experience, the number of times I've seen this scenario occur. Oh yeah. They've been in the ground forever. You know, we just didn't think about it. And then it's, you know, oil's bubbling out of the ground. It's not a good story. And it's not something I want to see happen at the school. So let's maybe nail that down. You know, when I, when I was an energy auditor, one of the first houses I audited, I audited because they were complaining that they had excessive oil usage. And I looked at their oil usage and I looked at what they had for in what their fill history was. And I said, your burner can't possibly burn that much oil. Um, Where's your line? Right through the concrete, corroded. Um, the end result yep. of that solution was they cut out the entire slab of the basement, took out a wall, brought in a mini excavator, and excavated down to bedrock um, in the foundation. It was a you know a couple hundred thousand dollar repair of a residential house. It was ugly. And, and and that's not even the worst case scenario. I, I could I could tell war stories, but I'm not going to take up the whole meeting with it. The the point is let's let's get some more info, and before we lose our minds, let's get some more information, and then we'll we'll talk about it again. That's going to vastly change priorities. But it's interesting that you two, and I'm glad this is why I like to learn from just the looks on both of your faces, Bill and you. I'm surprised it hasn't be and and Mara, whoever knows about it. I'm not trying to leave anybody. I just out. didn't know. I didn't know they had it on a I had no right, idea. Right. And no, good to bring it to the forefront before uh, things happen. You know, when you have old infrastructure, it's yeah. one of these things you're gonna have to go through and, and think about it. Mm -hmm. And that one is a prime example. It used to be that was the standard operating procedure. Every house, every place, heating oil tank, sure, out back under the ground. Terrible idea. You used to so, drain your engine oil right in here? your driveway too, Ever. though. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. New, new I'm gonna circle world. back to oh. Thank you for that. I'm circling back to the floor just for a second. So yeah. I know we're talking yeah, about Yeah, I think we should get time. back on topic here. I think yeah. we have now, apologies. Sorry about the interview. No, no, no. Oh, it's absolutely you. the right that good was... thing to add up, you know, to, to bring up. I think it's, we need to get back to the agenda. Yeah, no, that was good to know. Um, just are we considering this because they're bringing it forward? I know we have some quotes. Are we thinking we're going to find money like leftover money this year is that what we're trying to do with this they're not thinking of adding these totals to the dollar amount of the budget that's already been presented i guess that's my question or yeah. for the gym floor you know since they have the quotes and it, it's something that they want to do and they brought it forward we know we had the safety issues with the um bleachers last year and then we found the money so I'm just wondering at what status are we do, 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 we're requesting to refinish and repaint and they would love to. So I'm just wondering where in the cycle they want us to consider this. Is this with if we're lucky enough to have leftover money in this year's budget or does anybody know that? Or are we we're not adding it to the total of the budget we already have. I wouldn't think we can do that. And but, I mean, if, I would think if anything, we would do this through the building maintenance fund. It'd be typically, right, Eric? I mean, do you know kind of what the intention is here? So the Board of Selectmen has identified that as one of the key priorities for the building maintenance fund. So presuming that fund gets funded as it's in the budget, there is enough to do that. So... That's that's essentially currently budgeted. It's not additional money. Um, the board of selectmen did ask that at the same time we do that, they they repair the overhead fans that are in the gymna gymnasium, because um, anytime you have a super tall building, heat rises, and you get a, a significant temperature stratification. And the old build, the building was designed initially to have fans to push that heat down to ground level so you didn't have to, to run the heating system as much, but they've elected not to turn the fans on because they're too noisy. Um, and the old fans weren't really all that effective. So the question is, do we at the same time 
spend the money to replace the fans because it makes sense, right? You don't want to just spend $30,000 on a new gym floor and then move a bunch of heavy equipment onto there to install big fans. So their suggestion is to do both projects at once. It would add approximately $10,000 to the cost that combined that will take a pretty big hit of the money we have in the building maintenance fund. Um, so we will have to shift some other priorities, but that's okay. Um, we can do it. Does that Thank answer you. your question? Yes, yes. And uh, so you're saying the 10th, I don't, I didn't print the, the page. So, the so just, off. yeah, I think if I could ask Eric for some clarification. So they're asking for us to, uh, they're, they want to choose the uh, quote from New England sports floor which is about a $22,000, $23,000 quote. And there's an additional quote for $6,000 for fans. It, it's not clear from this letter, but I presume that that's where the 30,000 comes from. No, that's Both. actually, part of that is there's some additional costs that are gonna be uh, you know, engendered because when you get a floor sander to do a gymnasium floor, those are really large three phase sanders. And they all start with the assumption that we have three phase power in the gym. We don't. So in addition to the quote, they're doing two they things. They're <laughs> asking that we use a water-based finish, not an oil-based finish, because ultimately they do work a little better. Um, but they're more expensive because they take more quotes. So that increases the price. And we're going to have to supply a three-phase generator um, as part of the project and have uh, spend some money with the electrician to wire it. So they were assuming that the final cost to refinish the floor was going to be up to $30,000, which is why mm -hmm. CIP approved that. The Board of Selectmen, in addition, wants to spend around $6,000 uh, to buy the fans and have Lenco, um, you know, install them. The ins installation shouldn't be really expensive other than they will have to buy, you know, bring in a lift. They will probably have to rent the lift because I don't think Lenco has a truck mounted lift, but I don't want them driving that on the gym floor. So are we thinking time frame is if this was approved, in the summer when the students aren't there? Is that yes. what we're targeting? And yes, so I have everything definitely. in front of me. And, and it sounds like it would be in the next fiscal year and therefore be part of this budget for the with the building maintenance fund, right? And not additional funding, right? What he said it was- what, It's in our current right. budget re request, right, Eric? Am I misunderstanding that or no? Correct. It is, if the budget as approved as before you right now goes through, that project is basically funded as part of the building maintenance fund. So am I correct in assuming that we don't have to approve it right now? We're just going to be hopeful that we can do it? I mean, I unless... Well, I, think, I think it's approved as part of the budget, at least the funding would be. Right, right. The fund, okay. The funding, and we, I mean, and we could certainly approve. We could, I, I suppose, we could make a motion for approval to spend the money, predicated on the idea that the um, budget passes as in its current format for the building maintenance fund. Mark, that's what I was leading to because if, and that's fine. That's what I kind of want to because if it doesn't pass in the same way it is, we still could allocate. You know, we could move funds around if we thought this was a safety issue. You know, we are allowed as a board and Eric, whoever wants to answer this question, you know, if we feel this is a safety issue, something that really has to get done, well, then we'd just have to take something from somewhere else and say, well, this is a big priority for the town, just like you do in your household. Well, we're gonna do this this year. And then something else is gonna have to, I mean, are, is that the way we go into this? Right. We could approve it as long as everything passes and then everything's hunky-dory. But if it doesn't, and we think this is an urgent thing, then we still want to make sure it happens. Right. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. So the, I, think, I think if it's it, being we were... brought to us as it needs to happen. Sorry, Mark. And I, I get it. I take safety seriously. 
Yeah, so I think that the funding will come up just as part of our, our normal budget approval process um, mm -hmm. as to whether we just approve them moving forward with the expenditure. We can do that, but obviously that's kind of dependent upon the funding. So we can make it contingent upon the, the funding, you know, the budget passing with the, you know, sufficient, you know, building maintenance fund additions. Yeah, I mean, you could you could do a motion and just say that you'll expend this this project out of the building maintenance fund and leave it generic. And if we get through all the HVAC updates in the town hall in the fire department and get refunded by low SIP and fast enough, we'll do it in this budget cycle. If not, we'll do it next budget cycle. Um, but July one is only right after school starts. So it doesn't, it almost doesn't matter. But is this a safety issue? Is that why we're being, a, I, I want to, like you said, oh, we can maybe do it this year and next. I want to take it a hundred percent serious. This is being brought to us that they want this done. This is a safe, is it because of a safety issue? Is there pieces coming up on the floor or just because we're trying to, you know, I, there is a tripping issue that they're that I they're thought recorded. I heard that. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, because it was like wavy from all the 44 years of coding it. Yep. In some spots. So they have PE in there all the time. That could be a, a hazard. And uh, you know, we had the Easter egg hunt over the weekend, so that could have been potential hazard. So I don't know. Um, yeah. Thank you. No, I thought that I had heard something that there was some safety involved with it too. So I, I doubt it has anything to do with it, but last year my now 10 year old utterly face planted in that gym uh -oh. she was running across the floor and just wiped oh, out no. took a header concussion oh. whole nine oh, uh no. so yeah yeah <laughs> but that's megan she could do that <laughs> anywhere so i'm not <laughs> saying that, right all i'm saying is that's your that's your word right it, is that you it know, gets just, really hurt yeah just to point out too that you know as it states in the in the uh in the request letter this fish floor is 46 years old yeah <laughs> It, it, it's time right i mean and that's why the information is good because we want to make our decisions like what's the priority now you know okay we wanted to do this but now we've got to pivot and now we might have to pivot because of what you guys were saying about the underground tanks like right we'll I'm, I'm not saying anything yeah. i'm just saying that this i take this seriously and that's why i ask the questions like yeah. when i'm making decisions which you awesome. know which is going to stack up while well, something else can wait because that's a that's a want not a need or something so thank right. you that's all well, we're funded for now um if we if we proceed with this so that's good yeah anybody like to make a motion regarding this item um real quick do i need to abstain since i'm in the right commission or i don't think say so. that again do you do need I, to I abstain? Oh, all right i don't think so I don't okay. think there's any kind of conflict of interest, and you certainly are in a good position to understand the issue. I'll right. make a motion then to uh, approve the uh, gymnasium floor and the fans for thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> I'll second it. I I actually think the bill, if you improve it, approve it with the fans, is going to be in excess of thirty thousand. Yeah, the, so that's dollars. what Eric was explaining. The thirty thousand for the floor Three. finishing and. It, additional services so there's about another sixty five hundred dollars for fans we plus might want to just approve like a thirty seven thousand dollar package so it's right. ten thousand plus installation for the fans so i would say forty thousand is probably a more re realistic ex estimate by the time you do that entire project okay okay, okay. you want to state the uh motion, motion brian Sure, I would like to make a motion to approve the gymnasium floor at Andover Elementary School and the gymnasium fans for forty thousand dollars. Wait, do we say forty? Yes, yeah, forty thousand. Forty. Forty thousand. Yep. All right, perfect. Okay. You have uh, a second. My second. Okay, Rob seconds. Do we have any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. The motion passes. The next item then is, we kind of combined two items there, but the item 7C, which is the welcome to Andover sign. You have a nice little graphic pictorial in your uh, 
packet. Now, Eric, we vis we we discussed this at one point. And I oh, can't it, was approved, it was approved last year. Second year. one that we decided to to fund. It was it was funded last year. All right. Let me explain, All and right. then you can shoot holes in it. Proceed I'm, with I'm your not, explanation. I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other. This is not. So last year, the, the EDC has tried for many years to fund Welcome to Andover Science. They've generally been continually shot down. Um, last year, the Board of Selectmen agreed to fund one sign, um, which were pretty close to signing a contract on. Mm -hmm. Then the Economic Development Commission went back to CIP and said, well, you know, you funded the last one out of last year's budget. You should fund the second one out of the next budget. And um, CIP agreed that that was a legitimate and should be a fundable, you know, fundable expense. So, and they referred it back to Board of Finance um, to see whether you would agree with that. Um, this is not budget. So I'm, I'm gonna tell you that straight out. It's only, you know, another $4,200. Um, so you could add it to the budget or you could, I guess, try to find somewhere else to be. But if we are going to put up two, it would be smart to have them have the guy build both of them at the same time um, and just tell them, you know, we're budgeting one for this year and one for next year. So don't be expecting money for the second one until after July 1st, um, which they would do if Board of Finance decided you wanted to fund it. And Robert was on the CIP, so he can probably walk you through the logic for that. But that is what that is. So this is not a budgeted expense. I'm not saying it wouldn't be possible to find the money somewhere, um, but that that is the request. No, we could, and just for the record, we do not have a, a firm budget, so we could always add $4,000 and some line item to cover it. And I think that was our thought at CIP, just as Eric mentioned, you can kind of have our prior funding takes care of sign number one, and then we put something in this year's budget and right after when July hits, we can, you know, fund this, you know, pay for the second sign. And the only other thing that came up at CIP and Eric, I know you remember this, was whether, you know, there was a little minor installation detail, detail that Jay brought up that, you know, we were going to go back to the contractor. I don't know if that's happened, uh, but there was going to be a little bit of a discussion about how deep to bury it and, and whatnot, but other than I don't think it was something we anticipated that would affect the project cost or affect it dramatically. So right. my thought would be if we do add this to this year's budget to put like 4,500 uh, just to be sure uh, because I think it's 4,250 is the request. Right. Yeah. That's that's what they gave the town for an installed. Yeah, it's process. probably just to make sense the nickel and dime and day off. Although I would where where did we fund the last purchase out of Eric? We paid that out of the building maintenance fund. We did. Okay. We did. So we would just I mean we could just add forty five hundred to the building maintenance fund. Uh mm -hmm. so the sign number two could go in. That I, would be I, my thought and and my gut reaction to all of this. I mean CIP approved it. We agreed with the idea. Seems fine. Uh, it's literally just the same sign, you know, number two. Where and then I think that's it, right? I don't think Elaine's coming back for a third sign, is she? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> what, now there was two signs. One was going to be down by the old dog pound, is that correct? And the other one was going to be up somewhere on 316, Eric, isn't that what we said? Uh, one of them will be across... <laughs> That was kind of strange. That was great. Well, <laughs> who um, did that? Yeah. I didn't do that. <laughs> did I miss you? Something? Pushed a button. It was, I it did was a lewd. <laughs> I'm not right. losing. <laughs> anyway, okay. Sorry. So, I'm looking at spreadsheets. I missed something good. Go ahead. Yep. Board of Selectmen has gone back and forth multiple times about where they would allow the first sign to be put in. They made a decision to do it on that little piece of town property. Uh, right next to over and over. Um, so that is where the first sign is going in. 
Uh, I don't think they have agreed on a location for the second sign. They will have to argue with the EDC over sign location if it gets approved. Uh, Eric, wasn't I remember at, at CIP and maybe this maybe I thought this was done and I guess it's not done. I thought the second sign idea was at the end of um, Shoddy Mill. I think that was dog. one of the locations that was considered, but I don't think the Board of Selectmen has okay. blessed any second location yet. Okay. Um, I thought that they tend okay. to cogitate on that for a while <laughs> before they make decisions. Um, and just for a little context for this discussion, so our 2023 2024 budget line item for the building maintenance fund was $108,000. Mm -hmm. The 2024-2025 proposed budget line item is $100,000. So we're we're down um, from last year in the current proposed budget. So if we're going to add something in, I would suggest we just round it up to the $1,000 amount. We could do $105,000. Right. Don't yep. have to decide tonight, but we certainly could. Um, if somebody wants to, to make a motion to follow up on that, or we could- I just want to comment. Yep. All I was going to say is we haven't even, you know, I have a feeling we're going to be having debating on the, the budget. We haven't even really gotten into any of that stuff yet. So it's hard to, to make the decision tonight based on just all the things that are going to go forward. It's not a lot of money. It's just that because I listened to all, as you guys know, I tell you that it took forever to even come up with when they want the sign. So when I was at, in all the debates, and I'm so happy for Elaine that this has happened. She's put a lot of effort and time into it. But I guess I missed the, I go to all these meetings. So did, was it just at CIP that they decided let's go for a second sign? Because that I didn't hear at all. That, that was last week, Joanne. Oh, that literally just happened. I gotcha. So, and, and I know Elaine had mentioned in the past, they want two signs. And of course, that does all make sense. If you're doing it, just get it done if it's 4,000. But I'm not willing to add money to the budget yet when we, I, I'm i thinking maybe can we find it out of another line and just kind of move it in there. And, you know, so unless you guys want to add in and then we end up taking some out as we debate and talk, I that's my only thought. My thought is let's that just not forget it. So, you know, get it on the agenda in, some, in, in, a, in a specific way or add it to the budget provisionally or something. But I, I just feel like it's I, don't, I don't know that we want to approve it right today when we haven't done our line by line. That's what I'm saying. Go through the budget, which I like. I, I'm following you. I, I agree, mm -hmm. uh, but I think ultimately I want to approve it. But um, maybe the idea is that we we've heard it. We table it for now. I just if we table it, I don't want to forget. I don't want to get lost yeah. in the shuffle, and we forgot to add five thousand dollars somewhere, and mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. So. And I'm thinking about sure the words on I, the agenda. I'm, I've kept, I put a note in my, in the budget file, just I'm keeping track of some line item notes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can, I can bring that up next time we actually talk about the budget. We says, I think we we're at the point we need to start going through line by line by line. Uh, you know, you know, just. I don't want to change that whole first page, you know, over $5,000 or whatever our starting point, you know, that's, that's my thought, Rob, but yep, thank you. Works. Yeah, we could bring it back. Bring it back another meeting with that notation. Fine by me. Okay. All right. Well, if everybody's in agreement with that, then then we can move on. Otherwise, if, if you know somebody could make a motion, but otherwise we'll uh, we'll move Louise, on. Louise, yeah. I have a question. Louise, is yep. there any cost effectiveness to doing both of them at the same time? No. Yeah. I'm um, not, I'm, I'm, I think. If, if we did them both at the same time, they'll do them both for the same cost. I don't necessarily know if we came back in a year we, whether we'd get the same cost or not. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and are they going to look identical if they're made different times? Yeah. Separate that, batches? That's the concern I would have. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, I would say either you like the idea and you're willing to fund it or you don't, you know, you're not really interested in it and you don't do it. Um, well, we already made the decision. We're going to wait on it, right? Yeah, we didn't vote on that, right? We just oh. right. We're gonna we're gonna still talk about it, and then once we hit our line by line stuff, I guess or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Further comments or questions? 
Okay, hearing none, I guess we'll move on to agenda item eight, which is the administrator's report. Eric? Okay, um, I'm just gonna go over the stuff that's uh, actively Board of Finance related. Um, so we did submit a grant um, to LOTSIP for the Route 316 connectivity project. Um, I've been told unofficially that we will get that. Um, I have not been told officially that, but um, that's around a $2.9 million grant. So that would be super cool if we get it. Um, still an awful lot of work that would have to happen before we get to construction. So I wouldn't think you're gonna see any excavators in motion for at least a couple of years, but at least the funding source is secure, um, probably. Um, what's what's the concept for the work to be done there, Eric? Do we have a concept and a design at all, or preliminary? We, yeah, we do. Basically, it will be a multi-use pathway that runs from the town hall, the school, down the road, down along Route 316 to Cider Mill Road, um, then goes down Cider Mill Road, and then picks up another pathway that runs down 316, and it makes a connection onto the rail trail just before you get to the bridge. Right. Um, the problem is, is that even though it's a fairly short path, it is an incredibly expensive thing to build because it's going to be a couple of bridges in an elevated section uh, getting over a wetland. So it's just, um, you know, um, but it fits right in the center of what that application is for. Um, and it's also the only project really that the town could try to fund through that particular budget or that particular grant program. Um, because the other alternative for that is a straight road work project, but we actually don't have any road roads that really qualify because we're just too rural. So, um, and I've made a number of attempts to get DOT to upgrade some of our roads to quote unquote be major collectors so I could fund projects on them. But, you know, every time I've done it, made them do a traffic study of the road, they come back to me and say, yeah, no, still not a major collector, uh, pound sand. So that's a big grant. Um, we also submitted a rec trails grant kind of as a backup to design a second, an alternative trail if the lots of grant didn't get funded. I mean, my gut tells me we're not gonna get that funded, even though it's a really good idea. Um, rec trails grants are incredibly over-programmed um, and they're very hard to get. So far, if this one fails, I will be 0 for 4 trying to get money out of the rec trails program. Um, so, but, you know, you gotta keep trying. Um, we also submitted a really little grant, something called a micro grant to the Department of Transportation to fund a little bike share program for the town. Um, if we get it, it will be fully funded. So it won't be anything that requires taxation. I have no idea whether we'll get it or not, but it was worth the application. Um, the next major grant we're going after is something called the BRIC grant. And my goal for that is to fund the uh, remaining, uh, to fund a new generator for the municipal complex. So one that works for the fire department, the com new community center and the town hall. Um, and at the same time, I'm gonna try to pu put as part of that same grant, the money to finish off the community center so it can function as an emergency shelter. Um, the, the problem is those grants are really heavily weighted towards distressed communities. So the workaround is to submit it through our congressional or basically our state senator. So we are working with Murphy's office on submitting that as a legislative appropriation at the federal level. Um, so that's not something, an avenue the town has tried before. Um, so 
Um, and it, it's still competitive, but it's a lot less competitive to do it that way. I've been told flat out I wouldn't we wouldn't get the brick grant if we submitted it without that. So that's where we're going with that. So um, if we get that, um, we probably wouldn't, realistically, we wouldn't have the money for about a year. Um, but if it saves us, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, um, we can spend a little time to, to get that. So that's going on. The community center uh, is, you know, coming along well. They're drywalling it currently. So we've passed most of the major milestones. Um, and if you looked at the front of the building, you would see it's pretty close to the final grades now, and you can kind of see what it's going to look like and how it's going to lay out. Um, uh, other than that, I don't really have anything um, other than I did, we were in discussion today with with Jed Larson from the Planning and Zoning Commission and the town planner. Um, most of you know the town uh, has been struggling to get the contractor and the owner of the gravel pit that was permitted next to the extra mark on Route 6 to properly finish that off. Um, I suspect the town is going to start running up legal fees, um, forcing him to do that. Um, we've done everything we could do cheaply, um, and we're kind of at loggerheads. So I suspect we're going to end up in a lawsuit with that individual to force compliance. Uh, but I don't see a lot of alternative because the abutting property owner is Catherine Hutchinson, who's uh, um, an extremely sharp legal mind and still a federal judge. Um, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, either we're going to sue the owner or Catherine's going to end up suing the town. So I would rather be the suer than the sue. So that will affect the budget. Um, you know, we may end up, depending on whether that hits this fiscal year or next fiscal year, um, we may end up having to shift money in around to cover legal expenses. Um, but that's basically all I have, um, unless you have other questions or concerns for me. Sure. So, Eric, uh, just a couple quick questions on the connectivity grant that we hopefully are going to get. Uh, you said it was about a $3 million grant, 2.9, I think you said. Um, Correct. Is that, that's a 100% grant? It's not a, there's no match? It is a hundred percent. It funds a hundred percent of the construction costs. It does not fund design, which is why I worked really hard to get a legislative grant to fund preliminary design. And we should get most of the way through. I don't know whether we'll get to final design out of the existing pool of money I have, but if not, we're going to get pretty close. So if the town has to lay out any money for the project, um, it will be very small. It'll uh, be design work. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the second follow-up question I have for you is you, you mentioned, um, you know, there's a few little footbridges or whatever that'll have to be involved in this project. Uh, it, it brings to mind the question of O&M costs going forward once it's built. Do we have any sort of sense for the order of magnitude of what we might be looking at there? Because that would be on us, right? That's not the state's not going to fund our O and M. Uh, probably not. Probably that is on us. Although the so there is one, either one or two bridges that are potentially would end up being on us afterward for maintenance. Um, you know, and we are at basically adding the equivalent of about 0.5 miles of a single lane to our existing 34 miles, 34 and a half miles of double lane. So you can think about this as roughly a 1% increase in paved surface. So there is maintenance associated with that, although it is lower for pathway than it is for a road 
because it doesn't get the weight of traffic yeah, on. You're not going to have trucks going on this thing, right? <clears throat> right. Um, but the bridges, yes, we would be on the hook for the bridges. Um, we would, you know, these are pedestrian style bridges, so they are an order of magnitude cheaper than anything designed to take the weight of an automobile. Um, and we would probably be just buying, you know, pre-made Connex steel bridges um, and dropping them in on micro piling. So we're not, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You just buy those by the length. Right. Okay. Yes, I mean, I just, you know, it's just to... something to think about, uh, yep. you know, if this happens, when it happens, we're years mm -hmm. out probably, but it won't be zero. We'll have to build it into our budgeting for capital or whatever to keep it up, uh, presumably. So, yep. Thanks. That Joanne. Was, that was my follow-up question, Eric. I know I went to the, the meeting, Louise and I attended that meeting, that the one meeting you had about that. Um, and you had said, well, this will take, clearly it's a lot of money that will be given to the town, the 2.9, but this will take town approval. This would be another meeting thing that has to, I know you did a lot of the preliminary work. We went ahead and submitted the grant, but then it has to come before the town in a meeting, right? Because it's going to change the look of the whole in a, in a beautiful way. But like we said at the meeting, it involves like going through people's front yards and pathways and all of that. So does it have to be approved at the meeting or no? My suspicion is it does because it's similar to, so the two things that trip requirement for a town meeting that are related to this would be if, you know, let's say they were going to willing to fund 80% of the construction and the town was on the hook for 20. Mm -hmm. Before I could accept the grant, the town would have to agree to that because it's committing town funds. Okay. Because we've basically funded design um, and we will have funded construction, I think actually the town residents will not see any bills for doing this project. I think I've managed to essentially 100% fund it, which mm -hmm. kind of astounds me, but, um, but that's a good thing. Well, that's a great thing. I just, um, yeah, okay, so. But mm -hmm. the other thing that trips a requirement for a town meeting is a town meeting is required to accept a new road. And I believe a multi-use, so, it, and, and it's not quite analogous because usually a, a new road comes about because you have a subdivision and they put in new roads as part of the subdivision and then the town has to officially accept the work. And I was actually looking through the wording in the charter to see whether it was something that had to go to a town meeting. Um, I think you could argue it either way, but ultimately I would prefer to go to a town meeting, mm -hmm. you know, when we, before we go to construction um, and go in with the final plans and say, you know, this is what we're looking to approve. It's not costing you money, but it does affect the town. So well, and then, I would hope we go to town meeting on it. Right, right. And I don't want to get, I know we're getting along in our agenda and all. So no, thank you for that. I understand that. But kind of like Rob said, it will eventually affect like everything else. When we put up the community center, then we're going to have funding that's going to be part of the budget every year. And so It'd be nice to have that, although it's a great get if you do it, it just affects the whole look of the town too. So yeah, thank you for that, sure. Eric, for the explanation. Yep. Other questions for Eric? Okay, you got anything else, Eric? Nope, that's it, unless you got questions. Okay, I guess we'll move on to item nine, liaison report. So Rob, sounded like you had something to talk about. Yeah, uh, so at CIP last week, uh, we talked about the school plumbing. Now, I think I've mentioned to you guys a couple of times I got wind of this. Uh, I don't think I had the full scope of it, 
I'm not sure the school did at the time that I talked to you about it. They had a repair done. Eric mentioned this in the context of a you know insurance claim, but uh, in the context of that repair, I think some. I think it came out that there was more damage than was realized, and there are there are at least three key things that are wrong with the plumbing in the oldest section of the school that are causing leaks and whatnot. Uh, one of which is a leak of sewage, which is not good. So the guesstimate, and I, I understand this to be a guesstimate, a very fuzzy number, is that it could be a $200,000 project, give or take. Um, Eric, in, the, in our CIP meeting, Eric mentioned that given the kind of project it is and the potential scope of it, his gut is that we should get a mechanical electri uh, electrical plumbing engineer to do kind of a full survey and work plan, which might cost us, oh, I forget, Eric, what was your guess of it, 15K? My guess is that's going to be around 15K, but I could wow. be off on that. I mean, that's just based on hiring MEPs before to do something of similar scope. And then once we have that, then we'll know what to what to put out for RFP. Oh, what to put out for, uh, you know, to, for bid. Because our understanding is that the contractor who did the spot repair, his his reaction is, look, I can't give you a bid to tell you how to fix this unless I understand the full scope of the problem. And he hasn't done the deep dive and maybe not, I don't know if he even feels qualified to do it, it hence the MEP solution to this. It sounds like a pretty serious problem. There's 70 year old cast iron pipe involved. Um, so you, anyway, long story short, you're talking something that is significantly more expensive and also much more pressing than a parking lot. Based on that, I think that moves into number one on the priority list for AES. Uh, you know, and the parking lot, you know, you do some, some some basic. I think they already did it. Some basic, you know, spot repairs and, and let it ride because this thing is worse and needs to get dealt with in a big way. You got three bathrooms apparently that are unusable at this time in the school. So, step one would be if, when we left it last Thursday night. There was a hope that the contractor who has been helping us with the problem might be able to get in Monday this week and look at it. Eric, did that happen? Um, I did leave a message for the plumber today. He has not responded to me. Okay, so you know, the school put some conditions on when he could come in. To his contractors plan. get busy. School has its own issues. Right. So it hasn't happened, basically, is the answer. Well, um, I don't know whether it's happened or not, frankly. Um, okay. I am following up with it. And I'm also looking for, actively looking for an MEP um, and trying to get estimates, you know, a couple of different ways. One is using our in-house engineering firm who has an and does not have a staff MEP, but has an MEP that consults for them um, and getting an estimate from them. And then um, looking at a couple local uh, contractors asking them what MEPs you know they've worked for in the past that they found successful so my goal right now is to secure an MEP figure out what it's going to cost and get a scope of a, a repair scope and a repair design um and yeah, also yeah. see whether we can actually get the original blueprints from oh, the right. right Celeste was going to get back to you on that that's right so, yeah, that's the big question is we don't really know. We have a general sense now of the problem. I would not claim that we have the full, we've delineated the full scope. We, we you know, since the contractor went in there and did some repair work, we now know it's worse than we thought originally. When I first heard about this problem, it was described to me as a $50,000 problem. It's now $200,000. Maybe. We don't know. Um, well, I mean we're already into it for $35,000. It's just the initial hit was 
on the insurance company because it was an active sewage spill in the school. Right. So exactly. So now we are in the situation of, you know, when we're looking at the school, these is supposed to be working up their capital plan. This one has to be at the top of the list. You have a sewage leak, you have plumbing problems, you have water damage issues, you know, that could come from this thing. Right now, I know there's been some repair done. It may not be super acute, but it's not going to, I can't imagine it's going to hold uh, given the age and the fact that we've already had all these problems. So anyway, the upshot of the CIP meeting was, gosh, this has to go at the top of the list. And it has the potential to eat every dollar that the school and the town are putting in that fund this year. Wow. Okay. Well, this is why we want to have these <laughs> meetings and get the information. Was there a school person? Thank you, Rob. Was there the school personnel there to present with you? With yeah, you Celeste, Celeste with presented it. Oh, okay. No, that's good. I mean, that's what right. we want to happen. Shannon was there too, but Celeste was there to, to kind mm -hmm. of explain from her perspective. And then Eric chimed in with his okay. understanding of the situation. Is, is there, yeah. does school generally agree on the priority at this point? Or based on what they know, I know it's early. Well, my understanding is that the Board of Ed has discussed it, but they haven't formally agreed that the priority is not the parking lot anymore. Okay. Um, I will throw one other thing in the mix. I did have a discussion with Jay Tuttle, the public works supervisor. And I said, if, you know, because as part of the scope of repairing that, we were going to go after some catch basins that are having some issues. Um, so what we did say is that even if we don't do the parking lot this year, um, Public Works will take on the catch basin repair um, and replace the basin tops because a couple of them are sinking um, and we do have to bring up the grade, um, you know, so it's the parking lot works better. So that will be done um, if we don't pave it. If we do pave it, that would be part of the scope of the contract we're hired. If we don't, Public Works will take it on and we'll use our in-house paving contractor to repave the areas we cut out to repair the catch basins. And just that, those are just the drains, right? Those are that's gonna be Correct. small. Yeah. Okay. So had we known that these bathrooms weren't just to understand the problem too. Because now we're hearing of all these problems now that we, and i glad we are, we want to fix them. Now that the ideas of capital program, you know, capital improvements are happening. So people are looking at these things clo more closely. Have we known, Eric, that they've had inoperable bathrooms for a while? I know for a while enrollment was down and there was an area of the school that was shut down. Um, again, a huge problem. I'm in definitely exactly why I want this to work, you know, that the emergencies need to be attended to first. But all of a sudden, now now we're getting into, we're going to look at the whole building and, you know, see, because that, uh, I did, get just, a design plan. I mean, I understand these things. I've seen bids and different, and, and I get that. And kind of secondary to what Mark said are, is, AES, have they been reporting this has been a huge problem? They've wanted this, and is this their priority? And I'm not saying that we have to go with that, but when we get this information, this is how my brain works. Like it's all of a sudden we've got all this. And I'm definitely for the emergencies getting taken care of first. Yeah, sounds like it's a little preliminary. We'll probably have to get more information to really go forward for all of us. Yeah. So um, I'm just wondering, um, when when you have something like this, is it totally the Board of Ed's discretion on whether they fix that or not, or does the town have any say? The town owns the building. The safety of the, of the students is the town's responsibility. I mean, where where does the Board of Ed's uh, authority, like, or in our, the town's authority, where do they cross? I, I guess I'm confused about that because you talk about things like even the oil tank now that... Mm -hmm. That's you know, talking about earlier. Now that that could take precedent over, in my mind, the the leaky bathroom because you <laughs> that, that could be millions of dollars to clean that up. I know because I know somebody that had an oil tank leak. I know someone, and it is huge money. So 
I'm, I'm just wondering when it comes to the property that the town owns and the safety and the hazards and all that, where does the line get drawn here? The board of that said, well, we want a parking lot. We don't want to fix, you know, a leaky oil tank or we don't want to fix, you know, sewage problems. So I guess I'll shut up now and just ask. I think, I think I'm going to, going to guess, I'm sorry, Rob, I'll kind of just say, yeah, yeah, that, you know, ultimately it's got to get funded, right? And it's got to get funded, you know, kind of with the agreement of the, of the taxpayers and the, and the, you know, and the board of finance and the board of ed, you know, and the administration all working together, I think. So. Well, but, I, 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 I think what I was trying to get at is, is who, who has the authority, you know, to, to prioritize and things like that. And, and actually, this speaks to exactly the issues that Shannon and I have been trying to work out in the in the in the that capital, you know, plan, uh, or rather, how to use the capital funds, because the state statutes and the town charter say certain things. Um, the the state statutes carve out for the board of ed of any given town their responsibility to for the buildings and grounds. Now, does that mean? Does that include capital? Does that is that does that maintenance, mm. or does that include major capital expenditures? My read of it, her read of it, you know, this is part of the issue. Actually, what does our charter say, and how does it lay out the the the, the responsibilities? Long story short, I mean, ultimately, what Mark said is right. We're, we're all just going to have to come together on this. But as to the question of if the Board of Ed prioritizes in a way that we think is wrong or what have you, what happens? I don't know. Um, open to interpretation, I would say. Uh, and we could we could talk about uh, state statute or hand <laughs> over town charter stuff at some point uh, at another time. But um, that's exactly the issue, actually. And I only brought exactly it up, Rob. How, what, what their bailiwick is and where it ends is a really important question that feeds into all of these other things that we're dealing with. But this is exactly why I'm glad. We want to make sure that if an emergency or a safety, like Bill said, hazard yourself involved to comes for the children of the town, then all yes. bets are off, right? And so that's that was the only reason I asked that question. I wasn't like, oh, let them decide. Oh. I'm trying to trying to honor them, like, was it on their priority list, but also oh. understanding if it's an emergency, we've got to kind of act, I would hope. So that is interesting. I meant to answer your question there, actually. Um, I don't, this is slowly kind of developed. Months and months ago, I think I mentioned it at one of our meetings, that I had a conversation with Val, and she was telling me about this bathroom problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was the first time I'd heard. Mm -hmm. Um because the school has not had a capital plan, right? We didn't have a document in front of us to say, mm -hmm. hey, Board of Finance, here are our priorities and we're putting this at the, none of that exists. We want that to exist. We want that mm -hmm. to come into being. We need that to happen, mm -hmm. but we didn't have it. So what I got from this originally was Val just talking my ear off about various things at the school and mentioning to me, and we have this problem in the boys' bathroom. At the time, it was the boys' bathroom specifically. It was a urinal. That turns out to be like a third of the problem, if that. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out there's more going on. And she didn't know that at the time either. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the contractor came in to, I think, investigate and repair that mm -hmm. it turns out, wait a minute, rot row, there's this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And that's what's been, I'll be brought to. And, and for my, as far as I know, our CIP meeting this week was the first time I heard that the scope had ballooned like this. Yeah. And Eric, I don't know if you've heard, if you, you have a different timeline, but that's my time. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically what happened is around in the mid, sometime in December, um, I was discussing a series of projects with Rick Wilson, because we use my tech um his plumbing service for some things and they're doing the community center and he asked me what we were doing about the elementary school and i said don't know what you're talking about and he said oh um they have a really significant problem there they've got three bathrooms that are closed off 
um, there's going to end up being a really expensive repair to get that fixed. Mm -hmm. And that was the first. So I didn't hear about it from the school once Rick told me that that issue was occurring. I went back to the school and said, we've asked you multiple times for a capital plan. You're not giving it to us. Let's at least have a meeting and figure out right now what are the issues you want to get done and what do you, you know, because I know you're interested in the parking lot and I know you have concerns. Well, I know there's a plumbing issue in some form or another that has to be dealt mm -hmm. with. Let's get it all on paper. So I met with Celeste and the superintendent and Steve Campbell. Um, and we talked through kind of their laundry list of things that they had concerns with. Mm -hmm. And then I asked that Celeste give it back to me in letter form from the Board of Ed and say, these are the issues that we anticipate having and that we know. And then I walked through the building with Steve Campbell because he's the head, you yeah. know, custodian and asked him questions about a whole bunch of things, you know, and he pointed out some roof leaks and a bunch of other things we weren't talking about that are kind of on his radar, um, you know, as well as some of the sections of flat roof. So, you know, they still need to put together a capital plan for that building. So we understand, you know, what we're really in for. But in the short term, it seems like there's two things that are, you know, pressing. The first is that there are three sets of bathrooms in that building, boys' bathroom, a girls' bathroom, and then one of the sets of teacher bathrooms that are off limits and the plumbing has been disconnected. Because Rick basically said, look, all the cast iron plumbing is completely rotted out in that original section of the building. He said, as far as he, his gut tells him that it all needs to be replaced. Um, you know, so the question I had for him is, is this an application where we can, could consider bringing in a company to just realign them and use a polyethylene liner? And he said he didn't think there was enough structural left to that to consider that but you know he also basically said look this is you know this is above my pay grade you know i'm happy to to bid on the work but you need to bring an engineer in and you need to develop a scope of work um and a plan and a set of schematics um and then then i'm happy to bid and, and do the work but until then i'm not touching it and i suspect most plumbers will be in that you know, that's a, this is a commercial building. Um, it's old. It's going to need pretty extensive repairs. You need an engineered solution for it. So. Understood. No, thank you. That gives a great overview. Of course, anytime you have an old structure, old buildings, just like you went through us with the town hall and all the repairs, you know, it, it right. It's just at what time do you get the plan? When, do, you know, do you, right. right. I understand the concept right. of don't put a bandaid on something. And then in, in two months, you're going to have to just tear it all out to make the big repair. <laughs> it's just at what, so thank you. I just kind of wanted the timeline of hearing complaints or, you know, how big the problem had gotten it, if it had been a real inconvenience at the school or what's been going on, you know, so you said December. And no, sounds good. I mean, this is why we started the capital plan and why emergencies need to be attended to first. So yep. I'm good on all of that. There's nothing more we can do on it tonight, but thanks for all the overview. Yeah. So heads up, everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, uh, Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else from the board liaison reports? Okay, we'll move on to board open discussion. Does anybody have anything specific to bring before the board we haven't already discussed? I was just going to say nothing, nothing long. I thought, and I'm sure you were going to bring this up too, and Eric usually does at the end, you know, kind of to set our tone for our, is it next Wednesday? I don't have the calendar. We have another budget workshop meeting. Correct. Because um, we, you know, we did a pretty good timeline for tonight, so we'll get ready for that. My only request was going to be, um, I know 
Mark, if you agree on this or you think this is too preliminary, obviously we'll be, all of us will be bringing our questions or maybe items that we want to talk about. Um, a couple that I'd like to see come before the board is, and I, I was trying to open my spreadsheet on the side. I know there's a couple things that, Eric, remind me, you know how we said we wanted to hear from the people. So I know that the town clerk, we had done a big thing last last year and we significant she got a significant raise, you know, well deserved and we're glad about that. I forget if she had a, another big request. So I was at some point maybe at talk to her. That doesn't have to be next week. But is it the registrar of voters, Eric? Someone else requested kind of a significant thing. So I was just going to ask to hear why, because I know we significantly raised them last year too. Well, I think it's because they we have additional voting days. We have to we have to fund them because of the state yeah, requirements, so, right? So yeah. I will I will look at it. It wasn't opening for me while I was listening to other things. So if I have any specific questions, I'll get back to that. Those two came to mind just to get the rationale, but maybe maybe it's not needed once I look at it and you know review. So yeah. Mark, do you want me to respond? So sure. I did ask the town clerk. I told her that you would probably uh, want to speak to her at the next meeting because I know you had said in a previous meeting you wanted to talk to the town clerk. So she is expecting to uh, be at the next budget meeting, um, which I yeah, think I is the third. Yes, is the next third. Week, right. Um, and I also told Jed Larson because I know you, some of you had expressed some significant. Uh, concern about the open space fund. So I thought it appropriate that you hear directly from the chair of the Planning and Zoning Commission on why they think funding that is appropriate. Um, if you want to talk to the registrars at the next meeting, I will tell them uh, that they need to be on. I will Eric, tell you me, that. Let me review it tomorrow, you know, unless other people do. I'll review the figures tomorrow and see. I thought it was a significant increase. So I was just going to because I knew we had significantly increased them last year too. So right. I just try to get it in there. Uh, the registrars is up significantly. Mm -hmm. um, although remember, because we separate uh, revenue and expenses, we are we do have extra revenue in from the state to pay for that. Um, but part of the problem is we are now re required to have- Early voting. You know, instead of one day of voting, Mm -hmm. um, like for the presidential preference primaries, which are going on right now, and you can come vote tomorrow if you want. Um, um, I already voted. Um, but that's really expensive because instead of staffing for one day, we're staffing for five days. Mm -hmm. And when we get to the actual presidential elections, we will be staffing for 15 days instead of for one day as in the past. So it is a lot yeah. more expensive. Yeah, those were my only thoughts. I guess we'll get back into the budget things. Um, yeah, when we get to that line item, we should put a notation in. You know, like, mm -hmm. okay, this is going up by X, but we're receiving Y mm -hmm. from the state. And then we can really, that's how you evaluate, you know, what's the net. <clears throat> other than that. Hey, any other questions for the board, board open discussion? Are there anything else specifically that you want me to have prepped for you or get you additional information ahead of time for the next budget meeting? Can we have till Friday to get that to you, that request to you, Eric? Uh, well, Friday is technically a holiday. Right, that's, this um, is true. I will be working the morning of uh friday because i have two commitments but i don't want to work any longer than i no, have no no i mean then so. i'll try to have if i have any requests but i mean i know we receive our packets the day before so i'm just i just need a little bit of time not always but i well, mean I, I think anything we can get to eric in advance even if you don't think about it until monday or tuesday thank you it's just going to help him prepare a little bit because right. we're going to ask him one way or the other so you know, right. even if he okay. doesn't have a chance to research it before Wednesday's meeting, it at least gives him a little bit of heads up. So, you know, That's a I'm much sure for all of us, sooner is better. Yeah. And 
The only thing I would say about next week is we really probably need to start rolling down through these line by line. I, you know, if there's a lot of lines, I don't think we want to spend much time on the ones that are, you know, $500, $1,000 or no change. But I think that the, any of the significant changes, Eric's already addressed the top 10, but I think we need to start rolling down and just make sure we're comfortable with them. And if there's any that are, people are concerned about, let's, let's try to, iron it out and start start knocking it out like you know and then you know we, we've got to get through this you know it's it's there's nothing super surprising we've already talked about the big changes but we do need to start running running it down okay sounds good all right um just because it's board open discussion i don't know if if uh one idea that i thought we could look at to generate some more time potential revenue for the town. I don't know if anybody else saw this, but I see that the town of Tolland, oh. their, um, I think it's their conservation commission is now issuing permits to trap Bigfoot for $10 each. And I got to tell you, there's enough enthusiasts out there that if we try to put something <laughs> like that up, I didn't see that. there's a real opportunity. I like it. Do it. Throw that one before the board of selectmen. I think what I added a line item in the budget. For that. <laughs> Good ones. Trapping permits. So that's our little joke for the end of the day. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have anything else? If not, we will. Uh, our next agenda item is correspondence. I don't have any. Anybody have any other correspondence we haven't discussed? Mm -hmm. Public speak. Looks like we still do not have any members of the public in attendance. Okay, I guess we will entertain a motion for adjournment. I make Bill. the motion to adjourn. Bill makes a motion. Louise seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you very much, folks.